Vi går vidare. Eh, Echo Barge. Mårten. Där är det ju. Där är det ju. Ja, där är den. Och så okay. ska jag sätta på den här. Vad bra. Okej, okay, så det här är tredje utsprojektet som vi presenterar idag. Här. Lysande. Yes, Hoppas vi. So, I will take this presentation in English simply because everyone listening is not speaking Swedish. So, my name is Morten Björk. I'm a Swedish entrepreneur uh, involved in several companies in Sweden, Turkey, Poland, China, uh, supplying products right now everywhere from uh, the Gobi Desert in China, in Xinjiang, in Mongolia, where we balance wind farms to replace coal-fired district heating to nuclear farm in UK, to products in New Zealand, Southeast Asia, etc. So uh, one of the projects that I'm the founder of is the Echo Barge. And uh, this idea derived from when I was involved in uh, Iraq, where you cannot have uh, anyone investing in uh, electrical uh, power plants for schools and hospitals. So we did floating. So the team that you will see between behind Echo Barge have supplied 24 uh, fossil fueled although uh floating energy uh, energy producers in, in the world but now we do everything sustainable so what is an echo barge well you consider it as a ship or a throne as we say in swedish or a barge ship without engine who then can provide electricity energy storage many things and the benefit of using this as a ship is that you can produce it indoors at the shipyard you can make it modular and scalable If the customer, for any reason, cannot pay the bills, you can move it to the next client. You never get stuck, even if you work in areas where that could be more challenging. So Ecobarge is a company providing this type of floating infrastructure. So you can see we're like an e uh, EPC contractor. We've bridged a gap between the innovation company and the need of the end user. Uh, consider us as the... Uh, if you're selling drills, we are the guys financing the holes and with everything in between. Now, uh, we only work with uh, renewable energies. We meet most of the sustainable goals. We work in line with what you call blue economy. We focus on coastal areas. Uh, <clears throat> so what do we provide? Well, there is nothing you cannot install on a ship. As you may have traveled with one, you can understand most technologies are there. So, but we can see through our own feasibility studies that we perform, that there are some things which where the business cases become very good, very fast. Uh, for instance, cooling of fish. For instance, in Tanzania, where we now work, 35% of the fish caught is lost simply because they don't have cooling. Uh, and the cost and operation of this plant is less than the value of the lost fish. Uh, we also provide energy storage, uh, desalination, potable water. Uh, we charge boats, so we'll come back to that. And we also provide floating solar stations that can even cope with typhoons. So we have one project, and here we are so happy with the cooperation with Urban Tech Sweden and Electricity that we use to find the right technologies. And we really want to have Swedish technologies in there, as we can then use Swedish export credits as guarantor for the chair for the financiers. So in this case, we came to do convert a resort to an eco resort, and we ended up with the best business case when we work with the local community being cooling of fish. So uh, in this case, uh, we then use rooftop solar, floating solar, we provide energy storage to, pro to keep the fish cool uh, 24 hours. And uh, we also provide potable water. And uh, so this is, an, is, a, is a very good project. We were happy to be funded also from Smart City Sweden for this free feasibility study. We also provide them for resorts. Right now we are designing underwater rooms that you can stay in that is fully sustainable. We can in fact do entire resorts floating, but predominantly we focus on providing the services to a resort, including charging of the boats, but provide all the services, solid waste, uh, fluid waste, water, electricity, etc. And again, if that five-star resort doesn't pay the bills, we can just leave this cables doing taking care of all the ugly stuff and electricity on the beach and they can call us when they want the service again so it's quite more efficient way of collecting your payments it's a good business model so we work with big projects right now we're discussing projects where we have 50 to 90 000 cubic meter water that we should supply for 24 hours so we can use refurbished tankers but we also work modular and scalable and we can assemble this 
barges on modules container size to close to where they're supposed to be used. So <clears throat> included the technologies and containers, but also the actual barges, which can be from concrete, can be of steel, different materials. Maybe the most important is the business model behind this. Because as we do we work with barges, we use ship finance. The benefit for the investor is you know, only need to invest 20% to become the 100% owner. 80% of the ship itself and the revenue stream is the collateral for finance, which gives the investor an unbeatable return on investment. The feasibility indicates, for instance, for the Pemba case you just saw, that you have one year of building time and one year to get your 20% back. And you normally have a financial economic lifetime exceeding 25 years. Now, this is quite interesting. So we start actually with the end user through Victoria, who is sitting here, and a noble vision. Uh, she is the one, by the way, selecting the technology. So if you want to sell your things into this, Victoria is the person to speak with. Uh, or if you need help to do pre-visibility studies worldwide, she is the lady to speak with. Anyway, for the end users, we start with doing the pre-visibility studies where we, together with the local community, identify the needs, because the locals, they actually need their needs. They know their needs much better than we do. And then we turn this into business cases. We then start project companies, local partner companies. You can call them ship owners companies, where the majority investors enter to be international financer. You have the locals who also become shareholder. We provide to this local partner through service agreements, the chief engineer, who is in charge of operation, maintenance, and education. And uh, the local community get jobs, if you're talking this type of area. And they can also, we can work with poverty reduction through build, own, operate, transfer. Then EcoBarge, we then work with innovation companies based on our feasibility. And you can say we are the system integrator. But we are actually also the investors. We also part share owners. We take risk together with the end users as uh, investors in the budget. This is the long text. I just provided for those who want to have the presentation later. Uh, but in say, you can say for the investors, as I explained, through ship financing, you have unbeatable return on investment. Uh, you have suppliers and innovators. We become the test bed. We help you to scale internationally and integrate your solution into what the end user need. And then uh, we also uh, evaluate together with the end user, their needs, and they can actually be the owner or means of production in the end. Swash and Grow has been mentioned here. Yes, EcoBarge is one of the things within Swash and Grow. We also cooperate with the other urban tech Sweden uh, partners. Uh, so here we also have, uh, this is to provide water off grid based on this solution. Uh, there are many benefits, of course, for the local community. We provide jobs, we can work on grid or off grid. We minimize land occupation, and we have very less environmental impact. And we also provide under knowledge transfer education. This is also maybe interesting for this group. We provide the test bed for Swedish latest innovations where they are needed. Because if you're from Tanzania, you, you rarely go to Stockholm to look at the test bed. We actually self finance test beds as for, for, uh, to export Swedish innovation. Uh, we have a long history as turnkey installers with our team, <coughs> as we have together done more than 1,000 projects in, on five continents uh, with this team, even including war zones during war. So we are quite uh, good in this and also to commission the plants and to operate. So the, the proven business model is really interesting. My other company, El Panavik, for instance, example, we are balancing wind farms in China to the grid. We are doing thermal energy storage based on hot water and we compete with coal-fired district heating to reduce emissions. So we invested 100,000 in the Swedish company, and now we, are, we are, have been offered to our exit at 450 million Swedish, and we never even use a check credit. So if you're an innovation company, it's quite interesting business model to work in this way, because we can also secure IP and cooperation agreements through shareholder agreements, as we are involved the whole way. Uh, we're not only working abroad. You recognize some of your quest dog. Here we're right now supposed to hand in the building permit for a floating greenhouse and electrical charging of boats. Uh, we work with the boat sharing company. So the idea is then to start with the boats and then continue with the greenhouse to be fully operational. We're also working together with RICE right now. 
uh, on in another uh, Swedish city where we are then supposed to be able to provide off-grid water in terms of crisis and catastrophe in Sweden. But what do you do with that water when there is no catastrophe? In our case, we will do big swimming pools and spas and so on in the middle of the cities to make money on this emergency plans when they are not used when there is no crisis. <clears throat> so we have a big event on May 19 here in Stockholm. You can join online or you can join in, for in person. Please go into ecobars.se and uh, see if you want, if you want to join us. And uh, we're happy to work with Electricity as this is our way also to, uh, to find uh, suppliers like and, and contributors like yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you well. Any questions for Morten? You can make them in Swedish. Yeah. Swedish questions, please. Come on now. Fattar ni vilka möjligheter ni har här? Här har ni en superentreprenör. Där, vilka? Ja, då tar jag på svenska då. Har ni funderat på att harvest plastic, vad heter det på svenska? Plast ur havet. Ja, det är riktigt. Vi håller på att diskutera ett sådant projekt just nu i Indonesien. Och att plocka ner syre i... Det har, vi, det har vi faktiskt inte gjort. Men det låter spännande. Kontakta mig gärna och prata mer. Det är därför vi ska mingla nu. <laughs> ja. Nu andra? Ja, ah, men det här kommer Anna. Anna. Och jag har ju jobbat med grön mat. Ja, just det. Men det ja, just det. Det här jag vill ju veta lite mer om det här mer lokala. I det här fallet så samarbetar vi ett bolag som heter Farmy. Som håller på med sådana här microgreens. Så vi använder detta som ett showroom och testvärd. Men vi diskuterar också flytande greenhouses i fyra, fem olika städer. Större skala, baserat på hydrogen. För att göra det dessutom. Så att i det här fallet har man för Sjöstås lite mer ett, som en showcase kan man säga. Att det är möjligt. Monica, fram här. Där var det en fråga. Du visar sig en bild ett antal olika applikationer och marknader och du har ringat in fyra. Yes. Om du spanar tio år framåt, vilken är den största? Vatten. Hela världen på väg att ta vatten över huvudet. Nej, men det är faktiskt så att vi pratar väldigt mycket om vatten med att havet stiger. Det största problemet är att, att landet sjunker. För att man tar upp så mycket vatten ur marken. Vi håller på att krama ur hela jorden som en svamp, särskilt i kostnader av områden. Eh, och det är ett stort eh, problem. Så för oss är det fantastiskt eh, möjligt eh, som vi ska diskutera. Det är också det som Svårsyn Grow-programmet handlar om. Mm. 